Look in my eyes for my mind state. I'm on the grind 25, hey. Money on my mind, that's how I play. If you got it now, this what I say. Episode 18, Season 3 of the Swerve City Podcast. What's going on, everybody? It's Isaiah Swerve Scott here. We got the guest of the evening, Mr. Tyler Breeze himself. Hello. Ooh, gorgeous. Hello. Howdy doody. Hello. Hello, hello. everybody. Hello. hello. That was hello. a very generous hello. Hello. I, I toss out the hellos, you know? Yeah, I, I, I appreciate a Why good not? hello. Why not? A good hello. Right. And, of course, I can't forget my co-host every evening, all evening, Mr. TZ Scott. How you doing? And Big Swole over How you here. Doing? Mm. Press, mm. man. Big show. And let me just get straight to it. We just dropped new content right there, done by my man Siren over there, and Big Mike. Uh, yeah. Hey, what up? Yeah, we got Chit Trap. So all these interviews that we've been doing, we've been having the guests hang out a little bit later, five minutes later after the episode's been closing, and we have a little conversation. We ask some little questions, and now you get to see a little little uh, answers from them about little pop culture uh, references and stuff like that. Their little thoughts on them, what they feel and all that. But I'm not going to tell you what it is. You're just going to have to subscribe to the Swerve City Podcast on nice. YouTube.com backslash Swerve City Podcast. Once That's again, the way you're going to check it out. This is how you spell it. Boom. Because I always get asked this every week. <laughs> it's bright red colors, bro. <laughs> there I you don't go. know how you can't see <laughs> it. How other way would you spell Swerve City? You'd be surprised. It's pretty yeah. straightforward. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Accent mark over the E. I, I, don't yeah, know. I guess, I guess. You swerve. Yeah. 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 But it's the E. Swerve. But yeah. Swerve. One more good time, nice and slow for you. There it is. And boom. It's been an eventful last two weeks since we've been on here. Last episode, we had Leo Rush, and we had a surprise guest of John Morrison and Taya Valkyrie drop in. Oh. Yeah, midway through the episode. Right. So you got a, a threefer on a one -er. Nice. Who knows, we might bring them back individually and have the whole episode dedicated to them. But still then, you're just going to have to watch that one. Episode 17, Swerve What's City that? Podcast on Season 3. But um, what's been up with Big Swole lately in the past two weeks? It's been an eventful past two weeks, actually. Well, well, we want to yeah, talk yeah. about it. You know, Big Swole, I've been, I've been working hard at my, at my job. Oh, you're hard uh, to working. Yeah, well, uh, well. It ain't work when you're having fun, baby. It's not. It's not. And, hey. I, and I be having all the fun, too. Just, be, you know, just back there singing and stuff, singing in the background. Um, I was on TV. Uh, fighting a beast this past she beastly. week. Yeah, she she beastly. She got me. She got me a little bit, but I, I kicked her in the face though. I gave her a little bit of that swole food. So you got one. Yeah. Speaking of which, today's today's kicks are Pumas. Bring that up here, Charlotte's. Put it on the table. Ah, uh, oh sorry. Oh, sorry. we banged oh, the table. Oh, sorry, oh, my oh. bad. Oops. They match perfectly with my <laughs> brand new official big swole shirt. Mm. That's. Finally, I got a pro wrestling tea segue. shop, so right. I into have, the merch. I have, I have, I have, <laughs> look, I, I waste plug. no time. That's good. <laughs> waste I waste none. no none, no time. It's awesome. It has it. purple in it for the people with my Crohn's, so I'm representing everybody mm. in one shot. So yeah, that's that's what's been going on with me. What about you, TZ? What you been up to, bro? Well, you know, same old regular, same Besides old. Besides growing that hair back, I see. Ooh, I see. look at that. Yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Getting my. My little bit I got left at 31 back. Let me see the back. <laughs> yeah, see, see the back? Look at that. Uh, uh, right yeah. there, too. Okay, yeah, okay, it got okay. a little, you know what I mean? You can't see the battleground marks on there no more. You so, know what? Yeah. You know what? <laughs> you know what? God is not pleased. God, <laughs> God, God uh, I, had my, uh, I had my scars, you know what I'm saying? Can we my, tell the story one more my time? My war scars. <laughs> <laughs> Can we tell them for season three? No. It sounds like a good one. Oh, oh yeah. God. Season three, guys haven't heard this one. Gotta yet. let it out. Yeah. So, go. you'll be telling now? Yeah, we gotta tell them now. Go all right. ahead. Before so we get into the good I don't know if I'm. Uh, should I have some dressing to it? All right, here we go. <laughs> so, at the time, my head was bald, right? All right. I had a bald head. My head huge, as sure, you can see. Sure, so, sure. You know, big, you know. <laughs> and, um, you know, I had a bald head, and uh, I was getting my. Uh, you know, my, my Michael Jordan on. You mm -hmm. know, I was getting mm -hmm. my Michael Jordan on, sure. having a bald. Sure, and, sure. uh, me and the barber was in a good conversation, and he was, uh. <laughs> and he was cutting, mm -hmm. you know. So uh, I was kind of tired. Yeah. So while you know I was back, he's razor blade in the back of my head, yeah. and I just. <laughs> oh! <laughs> now it defeats gravity because I don't know how you sleep and your head falls back. Yeah. When naturally you fall forward. Yeah. But I'm in the barber chair talking, and I just like kind of got tired. Sure. So my head goes back, and I'm like, uh oh. 
<laughs> so the blade cuts the back of my head. Mm. Ooh. So I'm like, what happened? Next thing you know, I feel drops coming down my neck. Yeah, and yeah, I'm yeah. like, Barbara's like, oh, I nicked you. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah we ain't, Sweeney we ain't, Todd over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Got, yeah. Got you. you get worried. We ain't talking about LeBron James and everything in the chair, right? <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I got to stop the bleeding now. <laughs> so I, um, I have a little paper towel in the back of my head. My yeah. head bleeding, gushing spots all over the place. So there's a Dollar Tree <laughs> in the same plaza. Okay. So I walk. <laughs> Imagine him running. Yeah. yeah. So I'm walking. Ah, I'm walking in here. Blood dripping everywhere. So, from a little nick. So I know, sir. I know. So we walk into the. Uh, I walk into the Dollar Tree, and um, I'm like, "Where the band aids at?" All out, you know. I look. I look absolutely stupid doing this. I'm holding the back of my head like I'm, I'm hit. I'm hit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so I walk, so I walk in, and I'm walking through these. I'm walking through the aisles, trying to find the band aid. Nobody, all of a sudden, everybody got amnesia. Nobody knows where the damn band aids are. <laughs> so I have to search through these band aids, and then you know my head big, so you know regular band aids just ain't going. Need you know, pack. Ain't gonna stick. Need a whole pack I need, I, of I need that adhesive. Sure, boy. sure. Yeah. <laughs> I, need, I need adhesive. <laughs> 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 these <laughs> old <laughs> patches with the big old gauze. Pat, like the big old gauze. You know the one that extra really stick yeah. extra large. Oh, yeah. oh my god! Don't take a shower and let your head get wet. It's a wrap. So oh then I'm standing in line. The line is super long. I'm like, yo, can I please just get <laughs> some band aids and get out of here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. These things. I'm fainting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I feel. I'm still like, tired. I'm still tired. I feel like I'm shot. I feel like I'm shot, so I'm standing there in line. I'm standing there. I'm standing there. Blood just drip, guts off the back of my head. I don't know what to do. And and, and mind you, let's backtrack. In the barbershop, you put alcohol in the back of my head, <laughs> so my st- head's stinging. stinging. And bleeding. Yes, it's stinging, stinging, and, bleeding. stinging and bleeding. Stinging and bleeding. So stinging then I was like, you know what? Let me get to the front of the line. The lady asked me, "Are you okay?" And old lady, you know, she want to go to the yeah. back and check. And I'm like, no, let's not do that. You know, I just I'm just trying to get I'm these band aids. And I just want to go. The line's extra long. Sleepies. I'm frustrated. I'm tired. You know what I'm so saying? So tired. And so then the tired. barber had the nerve to still try to go talk about LeBron James after I'm cut. <laughs> so I was already agitated. <laughs> and then uh, I got home and took a shower. And like I just had to sit there for like an hour. Like, <laughs> like in this. In despair. In my spare time. Yeah. And um, yeah, so I have war wounds in the back of my neck yeah, that has so not gone away since. But here we are. We got a full effect. But that's right ahead now. It's back. It's but back. Then it's back. Lord yes. have mercy. And you know, I, I can always tell that that's a, always traumatic when you tell that story because you was you sweating, baby. <laughs> it's hot. <laughs> look, uh, it's hot, man. He's, it's, not, he's not used look, to the hair on his head. I'm not, used to, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not used to it. See, yeah, I'm under pressure. Yeah, I got you. I'm under you pressure. Like I got you. Lamb's wool. You out here sweating. <laughs> this, this, this is Florida, sir. Florida. <laughs> it's Florida. Oh. Man, last night we had the Super Bowl, San Francisco 49 versus the Chiefs, the Kansas City Chiefs last night. Mm. With man. Andy Reid finally got his ring. I'm happy. Hey, I'm happy yeah, about that. Yeah. Uh, you big American football person? Not no, at all. No, not at all. It was a it was a very big game, important <laughs> game last night, sir. I've heard. I've yeah. heard. I yes. only know because uh, Corbs. Corbs is a big Kansas City fan. He was there. I'll so get, he I'll was there. And he was very happy. Yeah, he I was, was like, uh, yeah. man. But the first half of the game, he very very much wasn't. No, it was down twenty to ten. Wow. And they came back, tw- scored twenty one points yeah, straight. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it was a great game. So. Amazing. Damn. So put Amazing. that out there. And it, anyway, Shakira did great. <laughs> oh, Shakira and J Lo performed at the halftime nice. show. A lot nice. of shaking. Yeah, nice. Shakira a lot of shaking. Great. So much shaking. Me, Shakira. I see you. <laughs> <laughs> can you do it one time? <laughs> <laughs> no, right. can you do this one more time? Funk is on oh, a yeah. roll. Funk I is on a roll. Funk is on a roll. Funk is on a roll. Somebody call my mama. Somebody call my mama. All right. What? Okay. Okay. Moving on. I'm done. I'm done. This is what happens. Icebreakers, everyone. Yeah. So welcome to the Sports City Podcast. Tyler Breeze here, everybody. What's going on, man? Uh, how's everything been going, bro? Good, good. Uh, You've been very busy lately. Super, super busy. Uh, I I like to keep a uh, a full plate. Yes. Full plate, yes. Yeah, yeah not yeah. only with uh, NXT stuff, but 205 now. And then um, also, uh, I got my school, Flatbacks. Flatbacks. Uh, yeah, flatbackswrestlingschool.com. Check it out. We're going to um, get into that more, heavy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and then, you know, we also do some stuff on the side. We do some Twitch streaming, um, which uh, me, who uh, it's me, uh, Dilly, who is Ty Dillinger or Sean Spears, whatever you want to call him, and uh, Corbs. So we got yeah. uh, we got some video game streaming stuff over there, and then I got like a, I don't know a bunch of stuff on the go, real estate stuff on the go. I, I don't know. Man, I, I have this, too much on the go. This man has a, a, too much on the so go. So for him to do, like take some time out and come over to the Sports City podcast, give us an hour of his time, man, I, we all appreciate yeah. that, man. It's, 
It's lovely. Yeah, it's but man, let's uh let's start back. We're gonna go far back, but not too far back. Because we we got we got some fun stuff we wanna get sure, into. We sure. wanna learn some fun things about Tyler right. Breeze, man. What's going on? Uh coming in from Canada. What yeah. part of Canada are you from? Uh, well, I mean, most people don't know Canada at all. So I, the, the mm-hmm. easiest way to explain it is the West Coast near Vancouver. Oh, okay. So yeah. you're on the Pacific Northwest yeah, area. Yeah. Okay. yeah, so I'm like four hours from Vancouver. Okay, okay. All right. So starting off in wrestling, where did you initially start? Well, so uh, growing up, I was kind of like, it, it was like small town Canada. So there wasn't really a lot of wrestling at all. Right. So the only option that I had, because I, I eventually wanted to make it to WWE, that was always the goal, because right. as a kid, you know, it was, a, it was literally, that was all I knew. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think I even found out about like WCW and everything else until I was like 14, 15. That's about the same um, age for me. Yeah, so all I knew was WW, WWF at the time, and I watched like WWF Superstars or something. That yes. was all I knew. So uh, I what looked, was this? Around time? Oh, when I was getting trained? Oh, uh, when, when, when you start watching. Oh, when I started watching, yeah. it was like six years old. Okay. Yeah, so I just like, st- I think my dad showed me one time, and I was just like, you know what? This is cool. And then just started like taping every Saturday. Yeah. It was like sa- uh, Superstars, and then I just kind of went from there. You're a repo man, bro. Yeah, yeah, dude, literally, it was like, and Superstars was so weird at that time, too, where it was like, for the most part, it was just like enhancement matches. So it was like, yeah. it was like uh, you know, TL Hopper against like Crush or something. And you're like, whoa, <laughs> this is going to be a good match. And like, I, at the time, I was like the perfect fan. I had no clue about anything. Man, that's the golden age. I loved it. Being innocent, age. just watching, like, I thought British Bulldog was the coolest, and just being like man this is awesome so didn't know anything like didn't know any of like backstage stuff no politics nothing just like knew exactly what it was and just like enjoyed it um so everything kind of like from then on was just geared towards wrestling and it was weird because like i was like a kid so i was like six or seven and like people would be like hey what are you gonna be when you grow up and i was like i'm gonna be a wrestler and they're like yeah sure like whatever Mm -hmm. and like it literally to the point where like going through school like my teachers would be like all right what are you gonna do like what what do you want to do in college and i was like i'm not going to college like i want to go to wrestling school and then wrestle for wwe that's what i'm going to do and they're like yeah you know that the odds of that are like so Mm. like you should have a backup plan Mm. and this and this and this whatever Mm. luckily my dream killer conversation dude right horrible and like going out of their way to do it and i was like you're supposed to like encourage me like Mm. as awesome as school is Mm -hmm. like I there's a ton of stuff being an a, a adult now I wish I learned in school like they should have taught me about finances and taxes and like all I'm this stuff that like more. how do they not teach you about this but that's a whole other subject yeah, you're just living um, in the wrong place it's crazy like, I'm from Clearwater and what they taught us they like, taught you that yeah so we lucky. had like other programs like we had in fifth grade oh. eighth grade all up and down like doing taxes learning everything how to um, balance the checks village, yeah. enterprise village <laughs> that's and, that's so and finance important park yeah that's we had, like, so th- important different there's like a field trips they yeah. would take us and we would have tests at the end to make yeah. sure we knew how to do certain oh, things that's, see that's so like, cool that should be worldwide yes that should be like yeah nationwide type mm, thing. it should be yeah, it yeah. Really should be um but so yeah so anyway so everything kind of geared towards towards school and high school was always that it was always i was going to go to you know wrestling school whatever it was didn't know of any at the time so i was like okay well you know i'm about to graduate i think it was like 2006 And I was like, I got to look at like a school here. So I looked at WWE at the time who had, I found out about like the developmental system. And I think Mm -hmm. at that time they had OVW. And I was like, okay, I'm from Canada. I can't just go into the States for like an undisclosed amount of time. I need to like have a plan here. So I was talking to somebody who ran like the front desk of OVW. Um, Basically, I can't work or anything because I I don't have a visa and stuff. So like I'd go down there to train, but I have to have like over 10 grand saved up to like live. And I was like, okay, how am I supposed to do this? Like this is ridiculous. At the time, as I'm looking it up, I just stumbled upon Lance Storm School, who was like right next to me, essentially like eight hours a province over. And I was like, okay, so I can go and train with Lance, who just popped up. I think he was like maybe the end of 06 or 07, somewhere in there. I was like his third or fourth class. And okay. But I was like, this makes sense. Like, I watched Lance growing up. He's good at what he does, and he's in Canada. I can work. I can go train with him. And it all just kind of, like, worked out and made sense. So that's kind of what I ended up doing. As soon as I graduated high school, uh, I moved right to Calgary and started the class in January, I believe. Oh, okay. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Like, I love when, like, the guys finally meet up with uh, some type of legend or somebody that's, like, who's doing a lot of stuff on TV now or something like that. And they, they, they finally they see something, and you're like, you know what? Yeah, I'll bring you in. Yeah. That's always, like, the beautiful mm-hmm. part because a lot of people, like, take that uh, the long traveled road which i'm pretty sure you still have you still had your t- long traveled road as well kind of it was a different the, different, the different different one road. yeah but, but, but um all these different roads lead to one place yes, yes some people's travels take longer some people find the detours and they just get right to it yeah but, i'm you know. i'm more of a like a to b person like yeah. if i want to go somewhere i figure out how to get there and how to make it happen and then i just make it happen so like even for example i trained with lance uh, after the course i started working on like the independence which 
in Canada, there's not a lot of independence. None. So like in Alberta, for example, I worked maybe twice a month. And it was like a little promotion, but it was like fun and I was having fun and learning and getting experience like you should. I did a couple of like cross Canada promotion or um, like tours and stuff where these guys would buy shows and you just kind of go in with like six people and do like three singles matches and a six man tag. And then you'd pack up the ring and then go to the next place. And he was driving across the country. Eventually I did it for like two or three years and was like, all right, this all seems to be like the same stuff. I should at least go and like see what I'm missing here. So I asked Lance, I was like, should I go to like a tryout? Cause they're doing tryouts at FCW, which yeah. then opened up. And I said, yeah, you know, I might as well just go down and like see what they say. If they're like, Hey, we're not interested in you because of this, 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 then I fix that. And away we go. Yep. So it makes sense in my head. Uh, so <laughs> simple. Yeah. yeah. So like these tryouts are popping up and it was like, you paid $1,500 and flew yourself down and you were there for like three or four days. So I was like, all right, screw it. I'm going to it. So I applied, they accepted, I went there. Uh, it was like 40 people, I think. And I got there and I was like, oh my God, like these guys are like huge and they're like, yeah. these guys are like, you know, uh, uh, just everything you can imagine. Uh, I can't remember exactly who was at the first one, but there were some like name guys there and whatever. Um, but I ended up doing it uh, almost within the first five, 10 minutes. I, I was like, I ruled out like over half the people. I was like, oh, I can smoke this guy. Like he oh, sucks. Yeah. He's not good. He can't move, <laughs> whatever. So like, I'm like, okay, like this should be okay. Like I shouldn't be too bad here. So I ended up doing it. I, I ended up making the connections because half the thing in wrestling is just who you know. So Networking. like I started, yeah. yeah, I started like, you know, kind of like I, um, I made sure that Steve Kern and Dr. Tom and Kidman and all those guys, Norman Smiley, like made sure everybody knew who I was. So uh, Jinder Mahal actually ended up getting assigned at that one. So he was like, they gave away like one contract at the end or whatever. Mm -hmm. He ended up getting it. So he does that. I think it was like three or four months later and uh, another tryout pops up. And so I'm like, I feel like I should at least like, is it too soon or do I go down? Like, what do right. I do? So I asked Lance again. I was like, hey, should I go back down? Like, what's the deal? And he asked Norman and Norman was like, yes, please send him down. I said, okay, cool. So like I, I applied again, same thing, 1500 bucks, flew myself down, everything else. At this point, uh, I had maxed out like all my credit cards and I was just like, if I don't get signed here, like I'm screwed because like <laughs> I'm like $10,000 in the hole. Like I'm, 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 hopefully this works out. So I go there, there's 80 people. And I was oh like, my oh my God. Like I immediately look yeah. around and like, just so you have an example, like Tony Nese is there. Oh. And Ooh. I look at me and I look at Tony Nese and I go, oh my, like they're hiring this guy. They're not hiring <laughs> me. So I see 80 people and I go, oh my God, like, I'm so like, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead here. And within the first five, 10 minutes, I'm like, nope. These guys are out. These guys are out. These guys suck. These guys are like fighting with each other for some reason. Like, how are you supposed to get a job when you're fighting with someone on the ground? Like, what is happening? So I start feeling a little better about myself. By like the first or second day, I asked Steve Kern. He remembers me. The, the, the good part is that they remembered me. Yes. So I go up and I go, hey, just, you know, get a gauge on like how I'm doing. And he goes, I'm not going to tell you anything, but like you're in our top five right now. I said, mm, cool, hey. that's like, that's Sounds solid. Like American yes. Idol right now. Yeah, so I go, that's pretty solid. Like, I'll take that. Out of 80? Yeah, so uh, so we end up going to like the third yeah. day. Uh, Edge ends up showing up. Mm. And I go like, oh, cool, man. Like, Edge is awesome. He shows up. He kind of comes out of the booth at the time where they were recording everything. And I just go, he's friends with Lance. I know that like Lance talked to him. I got to like introduce myself. So I go, hey, man, what's up? You know, I trained with Lance and whatever. And he goes, oh, he goes, Lance told me about you. And he goes, uh, I said, did you see my stuff? And he goes, no. He goes, I didn't, but I actually went back and rewound the tapes and like watched your match. And I went, whoa, that's like, yeah, Edge you're that. at that, like at the time, I think it was what, 2010? He's no, like, he's hot. He's, hot. he's, he's exactly, he's, he's the hottest he could be. Yeah. And I go, I go, you just went out of your way for a dude you don't know. And like you went, like you don't have to do anything. You don't even have to say hi yeah. to me. And yeah. he was like the coolest dude ever. And he goes, uh, he, he was in the meetings and stuff. And he was like, dude, like they're like into your stuff. Like you're, you got a good chance here or whatever. I said, cool, man. Like this is going really well. So, so the last day rolls around, I go, all right, like, you know, if I have to come back, I'll come back and whatever, whatever. I'm sitting right. there and I, I specifically had my head down. I was like, whatever happens, happens. And they're like, all right, guys, you know that we give away one contract at the end of this and everything else. One? Yeah, just Out one. Of 80? Yeah. And they might like call some people after, but they give away one. So they, it, I think it was one of those things the, at the time the where like, odds. if 80 people sign up for this thing, for real, they're making a bunch of money because it's a paid tryout. Yeah. But they got to at least give you like a little bit of something. So like one contract is guaranteed. So I'm sitting there and I go like, all right, whatever it is. And uh, as, as I'm just kind of like thinking, they, they like say my name. And I go, hold on, like, I think, and they're staring at me and I go, oh, I said, I, they, they, they're hiring me. I'm like, no, this is crazy. So I stand up and like, I think at the time it was like Dusty and Norman and Billy and everybody oh, on there. Man. So they bring me up to the front and we take pictures and congratulations and whatever. And I just go like, 
whoa, this is like actually happening. And uh, it was crazy. I like called my mom right away and was like, hey, she's like, how'd it go? And I said, I think it went pretty good. Like, <laughs> they hired me and she's like, oh my God, that's crazy and stuff. So That's amazing. Uh, it, yeah, and it was it worked out like I said the perfect time. Like if it didn't work out, I had a ton of debt that I was like, man, I don't know. I, I mean, I gotta like keep working, but I want to keep wrestling. But yeah. like, we'll go from here, I guess. And uh, that's just kind of it all worked out in my favor. Mm. See, we're gonna get into uh, talking about the family and the oh, yeah. supporting the dream yeah, yeah. and how that went because I know mothers get nerve wracked with oh, this yeah. Kind of career oh, yeah. all the time. Oh, Dad yeah. is still, just like still idiot. Yeah, yes, yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. So get those. <laughs> So, but before we do that, we're going to cut this stream right here. Oh, yeah. And you want to check the rest of this out at youtube.com backslash Swerve City Podcast. That's the only way you're going to see this. And it's going to drop on Monday. But if you subscribe to the Patreon and you pledge, you're going to get it two days early on Saturday. Ain't that right, Mike? That's right. Ain't that right, Si? <laughs> yeah. So, Swerve City Podcast on YouTube. Check out the rest of the episode. Yeah. Episode 18, That's season three. It. Boom. With Mr. Tyler Breeze That's right, right here. So we cut cut this, but we gonna keep going. Bye. Yeah, yeah, bye. Sure. Sure. All righty. So continuing on because this is an amazing story. <laughs> I have notes, but I'm like, I'm just gonna let them go. This I, I got, good. dude. I got yeah. so many stories. That's why I'm like, just this let one. it go. So the parents, <clears throat> how are they supporting of this? Or were they they nerve wracked? Were they? How are they feeling about hearing their son was to? Leave the country of Canada and go into pro wrestling in the States and all this other mess. Like, just go ahead. Just go. So luckily, luckily, I had like a very good parent support system. So like, yes. they like literally, I've explained this to people. Brothers, it, sisters? Uh, one sister. Okay. Who's also the best. Like, awesome. they're all my family is the exact same and they're awesome. Like, Amazing. Like, just super supportive. And like, if I told them, I was like, yeah, I want to be like homeless. They'd be like, awesome. You can be the best right. homeless person ever. <laughs> Bro, like, I won't give you a yeah, dime. Yes. Right. Yeah, whatever I can do. And that's, there's like, they're, they're just cool that way. So like, even just growing up, I played hockey for like 10 years and like my bag of hockey gear cost more than our car. You know what I mean? Ooh, like that's wow. just how it was. Like, yeah. but they were, and, and it was, you know, that's an expensive sport, man. And it, dude, and it wasn't even like I had like top of the line stuff. Like we just, yeah. that's just how like I, they didn't make a lot of money. But w I never mm -hmm. knew that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like until I grew up, and then I went, wow, you did a lot for me. Um, mm -hmm. But they made sure that you know everything was good. But uh, I guess growing up, like even as I was getting older, despite teachers and everybody else going like, yeah you'll grow out of wrestling and you'll never mm -hmm. make it, whatever. Right. They were like, the only thing that my, my dad one time said, uh, you should take like a business course or something just as like a backup plan. And I just told him, I was like, yeah, I don't need a backup plan. And he's like, what do you mean? And I go, if I have a backup plan, I'm going to focus on this and also my backup plan. Like mm -hmm. I, I, if this doesn't work out, which I'm not even accepting right now, but if it doesn't, I will be okay and I will then make another plan. But until then, this is my plan and all my energy is going towards here. And they were like, okay, cool. And like that's that was it. Okay. Um, obviously, like my mom, she was the one who like she drove me and my friend over to Calgary when we moved there, um, which I think my sister was moving out at the time too. So like she got super empty nest, and it was like, oh my, like what is Aww. happening? She was super <laughs> sad. So she drove over with us, um, and then once I started wrestling, like she was like super supportive. All of them were super supportive, but you know as moms do, like she would think I was hurt every, like, no matter what happened. Like, she'd be like, oh, my God, your face, your teeth. Like, what is happening? Like, you're, and I was like, Mom, it's all good. It's all good. Like, I'm, I'm okay at this. Like, I'm, I'm doing all right. And But then when I actually did get hurt and stuff, she'd be like, I knew it. So, like, I knew you were hurt. I was like, I know, Mom. Um, but it's actually really funny. So uh, my dad, so my, my mom watches all the stuff, too. But my dad is really funny where he watches and, like, so obviously you guys have, like, seen my career and for the most part I'm, I'm on the bottom like I'm usually on the bottom of the barrel I've gotten used to it and I've been okay with it uh, my dad is not he gets really mad <laughs> no. he, gets, he gets really mad he's like he's like, what are they doing why aren't they like why aren't you in this why are you winning this and why are you doing this greatest potential in yeah and I go no. like I said, I said you deserve to be the top oh, and it's so funny too because I've had the conversation with him so many times that he'll just have it with himself like I don't get it. Why'd you lose there? I know. You know, you're working there and it's all good and everything's cool and whatever. Mm. But I don't get it. You're, you're better than this guy and you should do this and whatever. I said, it's all good, Dan. It's all good. And he goes, I know, I know. So, uh, talk him off the ledge. One, mm -hmm. one thing that he gets really excited about is if I win. And another that he gets really excited about is if I do a hurricanrana. If oh. I, if I, if, if, I'm telling you, if I toss a hurricanrana in a match that I win, best match of all time. <laughs> best match of all time. That like, thing where you wrapped the legs oh, around yeah. this. 
Matt told me two things. I did I, uh, <laughs> on Friday. I was with Garza. Yes. And we actually had something in there where I was going to give him a Huracrana, and I was like, oh, Dad will love this. We cut it out in the match. And at the end, I think I went for another one, and he countered it. And so at the end, I jump up on his shoulders, and he counters it, and I was like, oh, Dad's going to be mad. And right away, he texts me. He said, awesome match. That stuff was really good. thought there was going to be a Huracrana. I, <laughs> I said, I know, Dad, I know. <laughs> so uh, one thing I wanted to ask you as well, you know, you have one of the most creative entrances in wrestling. Yeah. You know, when you coming yes. out, especially when you first came out, you had the cell phone. Oh, yeah, yeah. Tell me a little bit about that development and how that came about. Oh, my God. That's so smart, Smartphones became the hottest thing at that time, too. Well, so it was crazy where, like, I, I'm telling you, so the it's very odd. So if I meet somebody who just signed with WWE, it's very weird. But I tell them, I'm like, you won't even understand what I'm saying right now, but I've been through everything that can happen, and I've dealt with every person you can deal with. So if you ever have any questions, come and ask me, and I promise you I know the answer. So... Uh, I'm going to make it a long story, but getting to that. So I was signed in 2010. Basically, I almost got fired a bunch of times. The random things that saved me, uh, <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> so uh, I'll tell you, screw it. So I signed in 2010. Uh, things were going like okay, but like by four, and they, used to, they used to cut people all the time. Like mm. I've seen like thousands oh, of people yeah, Those cut. purges were All the time. I was like, Black yes. Friday, man. Black Ooh, Friday, right. people are gone. And like five to ten, like the big X. chunks. Ooh. So... Like I'm watching this happen, and every Friday I'm going like, "Oh God, I'm gonna get fired! Oh God, I'm gonna get fired!" I'm just like, I'm dying, and I'm going like, I'm calling Lance, and I'm like, "Dude, I'm like, what is happening here? Like, I'm gonna get fired." He's like, "He's like, it's all good. Like, you just got there. It's all good." I said, "Okay." So six months roll around, maybe, and uh, I find out from uh, somebody I can't remember who it was, uh, but they tell me that like, "Hey, I'm on a list to get fired," and I went, "Oh no," and I end up having Cesaro's first match in FCW. Mm. In that match, I don't know if you guys have seen it, but in that I, match, he throws me into the air and uppercuts me out of the air. Well, nobody in, nobody at that time had seen like Claudio do that stuff yet. Mm -hmm. So they saw that and they immediately went, whoa, like he killed him. But, you know, at the same time, they're like, is he OK? And I was like, yeah, I'm good. And uh, that bump saved my career because they went, hold on. Let's not fire him yet. There might be something there. Mm. Oh. And I went, oh, my God, because I like because I. Yeah. I and I guess, you know, it's whatever. But that. I was told saved my career. Two months later or three months later, all of a sudden I'm FCW heavyweight champ. And I go, what is happening? Like, I was literally on the cutting block and now all of a sudden they're like, I'm, is, is I'm that the champ of what it is. It is. is that there is. Yeah, 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 yeah. So then like two or three, and just, just, just like that, two or three, maybe six more months go by and all of a sudden, hey, you're on the list again. And I went, oh no. <laughs> what happened? Like, what happened? I was doing so well. You At think this, the music business oh, is crazy. Which, so also, you're like this. You're like this. Uh, I'm being told at the time, hey, we've got a big plan for you. We're going to be doing a WWE cruiserweight show. This was back in 2011. It took from 2011 to when 205 the, came out yeah. for that to come out. Seven years later. So, uh, <laughs> it, crazy, I'm telling you. So, rolls around, I'm on the chopping block again. Uh, we end up doing the pilot episode at NXT at Full Sail to yes. see if Full Sail will even work to, to do NXT. I end up working with my buddy, um, Bram, uh, who, uh, what, what's his Bram. other names? Bram, um, or, uh, in a, he was in Ascension. He was in the original Ascension. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Tom man. Latimer is his yeah, name. Yeah, yes, yes. Um, but I can't remember what his name was in Ascension. Kenneth Cameron. Yes. So Kenneth Cameron's my buddy. He's like one of my best friends. So we end up having a match against each other. Supposed to just be him killing me. Instead, he goes, you know what, man? Like, let's have like a match match. Like, pe people are here. Hunter's here. Like, everybody's here. Like, let's, let's show them what you can do because he knows. And like, obviously he knows, you know, how it's been. So we have a match. He lets me do some stuff, and we have like a back and forth match. And literally, Hunter looks over at Dusty and he goes, "Who's this guy? And where's he been? Like, why? Why do I not know this guy?" All of a sudden, I'm off the list, and I'm like back into like, "All right, we're going with this guy." <laughs> so I go, "Oh my god! Like, what is happening here?" Your sure chinny chin chin is like, "I'm dude, I'm dying, I'm dying." So, and the best part is, I keep finding out about this. So I'm like, oh, "I'm like scraping by here." So then, like, six months go by. All, oh, <laughs> all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> Man. Oh. Uh, so six months go by, same type of thing, and it's um. What did they say? They said something along the lines of like, uh, oh, you're you're uncoachable, and you know we're, we're really you think you're a lot better than you are. Um, no, uh, that that was the next one. Sorry. So this first one, the the first one is I I get brought into a room, and it was me, Corey Graves, Xavier Woods, Colin Cassidy, and somebody else, uh, Adam Rose. Mm. And, and we're told that we're doing an ESPN thing. We're doing an E60. 
And, and so, of course, we're all like, awesome, this is great. Like, this is really cool. So they follow us around. They do some interviews. They do all this other stuff. <laughs> Little did I know, I find this out after. <laughs> after Tyler Breeze comes into existence and I end up, like, being on NXT, and it, it took, like, whatever it was, a year or whatever it was. Right. After I became, like, in existence, and Cassidy, same thing. Enzo and Cass went together, and oh. they became a thing. Hunter's in front doing that, like, post-NXT chat, and he's talking to everybody. Yeah. And he goes, all right, uh, guys, just so you know, on this E60, there was supposed to be guys that made it and guys that did not make it. Me and Colin Cassidy were supposed to be the guys that did not make it and got fired at the end of this thing. We had no idea. We thought it was like, a, like hey, these are the guys that we want to, like, showcase. Not the case whatsoever. We were supposed to be fired. Hunter's telling everybody that we were supposed to be fired, and now, like, because we came up with stuff, our job is saved. Six months before that, I'm about to get fired again. <laughs> so we do the E60 thing. I guess they're supposed to fire me, but they can't fire me until the whatever's coming up. Yep. Um, uh, what was that part? What was that part? There was one. There was something I just started getting into, and then I forgot. This was going. Oh, this was the evaluation. Yes, yes. So I go into an evaluation. They we, they had them every now and then, and uh, me and Woods were actually pitching a tag team at this time. We were like, all right, this is like so we we bought like thousand dollars, which at the time we weren't making a lot of money. Yeah. So we, we bought like a thousand dollars worth of this like gear and like these jackets and everything else. And we did this whole thing. Dusty was really into it. Not a lot of other people were into it. So we went, okay, like we don't know what's happening. I sit down in this in this evaluation. I think I just got like a staph infection too. So like I can't Ooh, li- I, good I, old staff. Dude, I can't like I just went to the doctor and they like cut something out, so I can't move my arm. I'm sitting in this like evaluation. Right. And, hole in your oh arm. my god. And they, <laughs> they just let me have it for like ten minutes. And I'm thinking like, all right, I'm just gonna let these guys do their thing. But like I, I can't. I'm like stewing. And at this point, like I said, it's like my fourth or fifth time that I'm about to be fired. And I go like, you know what? Like they're telling me that I'm um, I'm uncoachable and I just I think I'm better than I am but I'm not actually that good and I don't pitch ideas and everything else and I just went you know what I said I did pitch an idea I said you guys gave me no feedback on it and they go oh no Woods got feedback on it like you didn't get you know we told him he must have not told you and I went he's my best friend we're pitching a tag team why would he not tell me so I immediately open the door pop my head out and I go Woods I said did they tell you anything about our tag team and he goes no he goes, why? I said, because they just said you did, but we'll get to that later. So I just close the door. And I go, this is, I said, this is by far the worst evaluation of all time. Like, I'm for sure Whoa. getting fired after this. <laughs> so I, I kind of start going off. And like, at this point, I've got so much ammo that I'm just like, burr, 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 like tossing at everybody. And <laughs> so finally, they just go like, all right, like, let's like, let's end it there before it kind of gets out of hand. And I go, sure, sure. Yeah, whatever. Like, cool. I leave and I just like look at Woods and I go, yeah, man, like, I said, I'm getting fired for sure. Like, that was not a good conversation to have. And he goes, and he goes, all right, man. And I think I'm texting him because I said, I'm going home. Like, I'm, I got staff. I'll see you in six weeks, whatever. So I text him. I go, yeah, I'm fired, dude. And he goes, he goes, well, <laughs> he goes, he goes, well, if you're getting fired, he goes, let's go down swinging. And I go, okay. I said, what do you got? And he goes, he goes, uh, th- they don't think we have any characters and stuff. He goes, come up with like 10 characters. He goes, yeah, at the time, if you don't know Woods, he's like a genius. Yeah. He, he taught himself how to do like Photoshop and video editing and all this other stuff as he's trying to get his PhD, all this stuff. He's ridiculous. So he's taught himself how to video edit and all this other stuff. So he goes, come up with like 10 characters, all different. He goes, we'll film videos for each one. We'll pitch all of them. And now they can never say that you never pitched anything again. So I came up with three different things. One was like Kale Cove. He was like this like snowboarder stoner dude. Amazing. Which I actually kind of liked. Uh, I was like ready. I was going to wear these. Like, I was going to wear these like <laughs> snow pants to wrestling, which would have been horrible. But I was like, Tried to run as a nose. Yeah, Kale Cove, dude, he's the coolest. So, uh, <laughs> so like SSX tricky. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> cool border. Cool border. Exactly like that. Exactly like that. Extreme one two Yes. Way yes. <laughs> oh, I would have been dying. Like, yeah. So yeah. snow pants, man. So, uh, so then I, I came up with one that was kind of like Dean Ambrose ish, which was like I don't know, it was like dark, and I was I don't know, I was like downtown in this vest with like these sunglasses and whatever. <laughs> it was whatever, but it was like it wasn't that cool. I just I'd never been a heel before, so I was like, oh, I want to be a heel. And then my last one was Tyler Breeze, and I was like, you know what? I've always been about wrestling. Like I love wrestling. Like mm. don't ever put a microphone in front of my face because I just want to wrestle. That's it. Like, if you ever put a microphone in front of my face, it'd be horrible. Like, no personality. Like, I'm giving 100%. Like, whatever. This sucks. So I just went, I went, I went let's go the complete opposite. Let's go, like, I've, I've, I've helped these people at tryouts who come in and they're models or they're actors or whatever, and they just go, like, I can wrestle. Wrestling's easy. And they, you know, they get words wrong and they get names wrong and they do all this stuff wrong. And I said, I'll just be one of them. Like, I'll, I won't wrestle at all. I'll, I'll go the complete opposite and then add in a little bit of Zoolander to it of just, like, I'm a male model who has no clue how to wrestle. Like, I never have a ten- intention of having a match, ever. So the initial, I know Woods has it. He's going to put it out at some point. But uh, the video, the initial pitch of me 
doing the Zoolander stuff had like we had to keep cutting because we were both laughing <laughs> and we both just looked at each other and I said this one's too good there's no way they'll ever want this one and and so we <laughs> sent him in Dusty I think was the only one who got back to me and he goes uh, he goes I don't know about the other ones but Tyler Breeze there might be something here and I went no way like this wow. is the one that we we're like there's no way they're going with he said he said we'll try out some promos see what you think so I started cutting these promos and I started getting really comfortable as like not wrestling at all, like just being a guy who like I came in and I kind of, I think at the time I talked really, like I had this really soft voice too. So I was like, hi, I'm Tyler Breeze. And I do this thing and I had like, I had this little eight by 10 that was like this real like goofy looking thing. It was, it was Zoolander's, Zoolander's hell. But I kept getting like all these like words wrong and stuff. Like I'd be like, oh man, I'm looking for a friend team partner and like all this friend stuff. Team yeah, partner. like, but all this stuff. But so as I'm doing it, which I'm kind of a goofy dude anyway, but I'm, I'm like having fun with it. And then everybody's laughing at me, and I'm going like, "All right, this might be like good. Like I'm comfortable being this this dude, and I'm yeah. comfortable making people laugh. I can do this." So I kind of just keep going and keep going and keep going, and all of a sudden, like I'm getting like really in the groove of like what mm. this is. So then uh, all of a sudden, I was told, and I don't know if you guys were told this, but when I first got there, I was told you have to be able to make your ideas their ideas. And, yep. I, and I said, "I don't know what that means. Like, how am I supposed to get someone to think what I'm thinking? Like, how does that work?" Well, so I end up like pitching things and then all of a sudden my own ideas are getting pitched back to me and I'm like, yeah, that sounds great. Like, that's exactly what I told you. So like, what? This is ridiculous. But so all of a sudden, like, it was like, all right, hey, we're going to go with this Tyler Breeze thing. Like, do you have gear? And I said, yeah, I got like gear over here. And it goes, all right, like, do you want to we'll switch your name and everything? I said, yep. I said, you got music? Yeah, we'll find music. And I had like a match. And I think for like three or four matches, I just wrestled Mojo and, uh, uh, I did nothing. I literally, I came out with a mirror at the time. With a mirror was the first thing. And mm -hmm. I came out with a mirror and I'd just like stare at myself and then we'd have like, I'd do nothing and the crowd would boo the hell out of me up until like, I don't know, I think I'd beat him up or something and then we'd kind of just do a little five minute match. Like it was nothing. Mm -hmm. And basically what was told to me was like, just cause you know all these moves and how to wrestle, mm -hmm. doesn't mean you have to do any of them. I said, okay. So all I did really was like punch and kick and then I'd do like a finish, which was my spin kick, I think. And mm -hmm. that was it. And, um, so I was like, okay, like I'm kind of figuring out how to do this, but I don't fully know how to be Tyler Breeze yet. Yeah. And uh, we kind of just kept messing around with it, messing around with it, and all of a sudden it was like, all right, uh, we're gonna do this at NXT, like as a as a we're gonna debut it. And immediately, like Hunter kind of saw. So this was that was the longest story ever, by the way, to get to why I do a phone. This is your interview, uh, man. Hey, hey. Take but it, bro. So, no. Uh, I, I, I have a mirror, <laughs> and I'm coming out doing the th stuff with the mirror, and and Triple H is the one who goes, I don't know, man. The mirror the mirror feels like '80s, like it feels like it's been done. He goes aren't like selfies a big thing right now? That's him. And I go, that's exactly I go, how he is. I go, yeah. And he goes, let's do that. He goes, have a phone instead. And I said, okay. And I, he said, just take your selfies and whatever, whatever. And I said, okay, cool. So if you watch like my first match is Tyler Breeze, there's nothing on the Tron or anything. It's just me with the phone and they got the phone and I'm taking a million selfies, which also I'm using one of the guy's phones in the back, one of the office guys. I think it was Billy Gunn maybe. And they're calling me as I'm making my entrance, as I'm debuting on NXT, and I have to keep declining the call, declining the call, <laughs> declining the call, declining the call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, guys, like, what are you doing? Like, you're purposely like messing with yeah. me here as I'm like, my career's in the balance for the 12th time. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so it, I ended up, it was Hunter's idea to use the phone, and then I think the next week or a couple weeks after that, the tech guys who were awesome, they were like, hey, we can actually stream that up to the Tron, and like, do you wanna do that? I was like, yeah, why not? <laughs> so like, we did that, and then all of a sudden it just kind of snowballed, and it was like, you know, what I was doing was ridiculous, but the people at Full Sail, they kind of gave a life of its own to yeah. it. And then all of a sudden it was like, very quickly, I think, I, uh, I they didn't fully turn me baby face, but the crowd turned me baby yep. face to where it was like, I think I had a match with Sammy or something. And they were like, yep, like we like this guy and he's entertaining and everything else. And they just kind of like got fully into my stuff and they've never like given up on me, which is cool. Freaking beautiful. Yeah. I love that. Like, And I hope like people watching this, Man, we always talk about, like, um, every guest that comes in, we talk about their highs and lows. Oh, yeah. I had the notes. I had the questions. You just went and answered As four all, five yeah, of them yeah, yeah, on yeah, their just, own. I'm like, eh, say, that's what I'm like, go <laughs> ahead. Go right I, got, ahead. Well, I got so much stuff, man. But it's man, crazy. It's crazy. But what we want to do is, like, try to influence people to have that confidence. Like, yeah. people that, like, fail at everything. Fail at, like, this doesn't work out. They don't have the confidence. Of the, they don't have the that uh, bravery to go out and do the, take these risks. Like, the people that are here right now, the guests that are, like, doing stuff on TV that are, like, these like guys that are just successful at things, they went through those same things that you have, you know, like they've been told like by their teachers, yeah. like, no, this is not a smart thing to do. You shouldn't do it. And that like for the average person, that kills their spirit oh, yeah. and they go with a whole different different route. Yep. Mm -hmm. And there's all this this whole left lane of like what could have been, all this regret. Yeah. yeah. All this like, man, 
maybe I should have shouldn't have listened to them. What if I would have took that extra step? But you, they instill that fear in you, yep. and it keeps you in that same spot. Well, like, it's because the, it's, the thing too is as you grow up and you, I, I'm very big on like reading and like learning and understanding different like why people are the way they are, and like so that example. People are so quick, and I mean, especially on like social media and stuff like that, but people put so much emphasis on that now. Yeah. But people are so quick to like bring Whoa. someone else down because they're scared of doing stuff. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think it was like Jim Carrey actually had like a really good like, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, he yeah. either got like a doctorate or something where he was giving a speech. And he goes, look, like it is entirely possible to fail at something that you don't even want to do. And he goes, why wouldn't you take the chance of like doing what you want to do? He goes, you could be successful at it. And I started kind of just realizing that and applying it to everything where I'm like, I'm not the most smartest guy in the world, but I know I'm not the dumbest. And there's people who are less smart than me or less talented or less whatever, and they're doing okay just because they're trying it. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. a lot of the times, too, took like... That first step. Yeah, a lot of the times, mm -hmm. too, like, we make it so much worse in our head, and we, we worry about 90% of things that never happen. So I was like, you know what? Yeah, screw it. Let's try this. Oh, hey, that was easy. Let's do this. Oh, that was easy. Yeah, let's do this. Yeah, yeah I can do this. Whatever. And the more you keep, keep getting those, yes. the more everything seems more a lot more easy. And then when you so fail easy. at them, you don't get that anxiety in you. No, you're not the... And so, and I guess my biggest thing, too, was, like, I obviously I work for WWE. Like, worst case scenario, I mess up everything, and I lose all <laughs> my money and everything else. I have a good paying job, and I'll recover. Like, I'm not, like, 50 years old and broke. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I'll be okay. And that, I guess, helps me a little bit to where I'm like, all right, I got the security here and there. Yeah. But also when I didn't, it was at the same time where I was like, screw it. Like, I'm going here and I'm doing this. I'm going here and I'm doing this and I'm learning from this and I'm doing whatever. And just that first step, I don't know why people, it's so, it's like an Everest it's, for them. It's scary. Yes, yeah, super it's scary. scary. It's that first step off that ledge, you know, yeah. thinking that you're going to fall down. Yeah. Really, it's Indiana Jones. Yeah. It's Indiana Jones. And that's why it's so easy for people, step. that's why it's so easy for people too to go like, ah. You know, you can't do this. Why? Because right. you can't. Like mm -hmm. they nah, failed. Because they failed it. at it. Yes. Perpetuating all their negativity. Exactly. You. I'm exactly. like, I'm not living my Don't life. Don't live with it. What ifs? Don't live it. No, sir. It's great. <laughs> Absolutely, man. So you know, let, let me ask you this. I'm gonna take you over to his table a little bit. If you a little bit about me, I'm a musician. I'm a hip hop artist. Awesome. And I like to ask people when they come in. You know, give me some of your favorite albums growing up and some albums you like now give me some of your favorite projects or any genre of music that you listen to so i'm like all over the place so i grew up um my favorite type of shuffle list by yeah. the way all over the place everything yeah. everything so i grew up uh my parents were like into like country music and growing up i hated country music i was like i was like ah i'm never gonna listen to this like stop this sucks whatever but they also listened to like like hard rock like acdc and guns and roses and everything else aerosmith and i was like yep that's cool uh so i kind of grew up on that and then as I kind of like got older, all of a sudden I was like, hmm, I actually kind of like all this stuff. And like, really there's not a lot of stuff that I don't like at all. Um, I guess there's a, like I don't even know, I'm not a big favorites person, because there's just okay. so many options. Like I'm not got like, you. this is my favorite, whatever. It changes all the time. Like sometimes I'm in the mood to like listen to whatever. So like right now on my Echo and stuff, I just go like, hey, play Country Heat. And like Country Heat is like just all the hottest like new country stuff oh, or whatever. Yeah. Gotcha. But then it also ranges back to like, hey, I want to listen to like Blink-182 from when I was like 14. And I was like, yeah. And then it's all of a sudden and it's like, angst. yeah, like, like my no. newfound glory and like all the stuff. I was like, and cool, good yellow card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go listen to the stuff yeah. you want. Yeah. 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 That plays on there. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And, and yeah. you don't like it. Yeah, you don't like that stuff, that's do you? Same band, right? Nah, oh. nah. Well, don't worry. Don't. So, uh, I, I, I say nothing. Nah, yo, just, we have this conversation all the time. I mean, I'm we, like, I can't decipher which we, one's which band when the song oh, comes on. Out here, brrr, again. I'm like, that's <laughs> Good Charlotte. It's different between like right? Yellow Card and Good Big Charlotte. Big difference. Big, yellow Card and violin and stuff. It's, and way different. Lincoln Park and Green Day. Oh, Lincoln Park way and different. White Stripes. Way different. See, you, know, it's, 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 you can't yeah. throw Lincoln Park in that because I, if I can decipher Lincoln Park, they're a little harder. They're a little harder. A little yeah. harder. Yeah. 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 But um, man, when you mix in like the Sum Forty Ones and like the yeah, My Chemical Romances, Romances, Romances and the, I'm oh, like, so whoa. It has good hits. Yeah. But then, <laughs> and so that's I guess whatever is like good at the time. So like Eminem mm. dropped his new album. Ooh, I've yeah. been listening to that like crazy. You Ooh, know what I mean? Right. So like all this little stuff here and there. Um, I didn't get a chance. Lil Wayne just dropped his too. I haven't. Oh, yeah. stay away. Not good? Yeah. Is laundry trash? Oh. Not good? Funeral, 24 tracks. Or funeral, whatever you call it. Look, laundry. What you call it? Laundry, because it's dirty laundry. That's what. Not good? <laughs> it is. 
You get to like it's a twenty four track album yeah. project. You yeah. get to track six That's and then it just starts. Uh, yeah, it just all meshes. Okay. Like yes, yeah, after track six to like eighteen, you're like kind of hearing the same song. Okay. And well, and like, even so, like Eminem's new one, there was like three main songs that I was like, "Yep, these are awesome." Oh, mm. but man, that that album is probably one of the best ones. Solid. That flow. Solid. It flows yeah. all yeah, the way yeah, through. Yeah. Perfect. And I haven't heard an album like that from him since like recovery. It had like some old school like Eminem. Hey, like, hey, hey, Mad- hey! <laughs> he's making faces. I, he, no, you can't hey. judge the music, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah, judge yeah, look, no, no. Look at him. That's, that's, that's a judgy face. That's a judgy face. Right there. face. <laughs> they looked at each other. That's where I'm mad, really mad at. They said, they did the, I'm like, hold up. Cons- conspiring. What? Yeah. Conspiracy. Don't Conspir- do it. Yeah, what, you, what have you heard lately, Cy? Huh? What'd you like? What, nah, uh, you what, don't want to tell because we're going to judge what, him. What? Griselda? Griselda? <laughs> <laughs> Benny the Butcher? What? What? <laughs> Conway? <laughs> Conway, yeah. Yeah, what we listening to? Freddie Gibbs again? <laughs> what? <laughs> Meg Thee Stallion? What are we on now this hey, week? Hey, 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 what are we on this week? Out, man. What are we on this week? I, I want to know. I love Meg Stallion. What a, what a heated topic. So, uh, including uh, the continuation by music, uh, what concerts have you been to? Any concerts? Any major mm. bands you've gone to? Uh, so, I haven't been to... Oh, man, I haven't been to a concert... Last actually, concert you went to. So last concert I went to was actually uh, NXT worked like those music festivals. Uh, oh, download. download. Uh, that was that's, well, that's the UK one. Download? I didn't do the UK one. Okay. I did one in like mm. somewhere in Tennessee. <laughs> that was the Memphis one, then, uh, maybe. Uh, maybe there's like two or three that we've been to. Okay. But it was kind of cool because like I was at that one and like just as you're wrestling, you're hearing like Rob Zombie over there and like all these like random people that you're like, this is cool, like Shine Down and stuff. Um, Shine Down's the best. Shine Down's great. I, I'm like smiling in the match. I'm like, Shine Down's the best. I want to go like, work out. yeah. Um, but so that, I, which I guess it counts as a concert. Like I was there, but like not there, there. Um, but be, they paid to before get to that, go, like, before that would have been back when I lived in Calgary still in like 20, uh, maybe 2010. And it was uh, Crew Fest, it was Motley Crew. Oh, hey. was wicked! What a concert! Was there? Oh my god! Yeah. Oh man! Wicked, dude! It, what a so what a good concert! What a good mm, concert! Wow. Okay. Yeah. I get I get down with some Motley Crue. Motley Crue, solid, bro. I get down with some Motley. Solid. It was a good show. Oh, the best. Patronizing me. And not even just the music, but like the whole show <laughs> was so good. The best concert. Oh, Tommy's like flying around, and like they got this big like. Oh, it was crazy. Absolutely. So let's take it over to Swole's world, you know, then take her over to her line of. Of her beautiful <laughs> domain over here in Swole's world. It's, it is a world, uh, I'll say yeah. that. What? What's wrong with my world? Nothing. It's yours. Take it. You have it. Well, you when it gets to your part, you need to play that like, Debo uh, music. Get that K-pop going over there. What bite? What bite? What chain? Maker? Yeah, okay, I get what you're saying now. Uh, look, <laughs> I, I really just proved the whole point just there. Just in that little time. <laughs> I always uh, I always break them. I always break them down. Oh, my God. Let me get my cheat sheet. Move your little phone. All right, Mama. Dang. Look, stop playing over there. Dang it. All right. I wanted to say it when you were talking about your selfie game. Now tell me about this cameo you made. Which one? The, for the chain smokers. Oh yeah, that was a little. Oh my god. Yes. Oh, Let me take oh. a selfie. Mm, yes. The, yeah. That <laughs> How'd was, that come about? Um. So it's real weird how things happen, which like, they kind of just drop on your lap, and you're like, mm. all right, I guess. So like <laughs> sure. that. So that came because uh, I think at the time I want to say I already had my music, like my new music, which I sang. So. It was kind of weird. It was like a couple things happened in a row. So I was doing like the Tyler Breeze thing. It kind of took off a little bit. All of a sudden, we were at Full sale, and I think I was sick. I was like really sick, and we just finished. And uh, they go, all right, can you go to the PC to like film uh, a couple voiceovers? And I said, I guess, but like, I'm not, like I'm, I, I got a voice. Like I feel horrible, whatever. Mm-hmm. I said, oh, okay, we'll email you like what the lines are. Like it's nothing crazy. I said, okay. <laughs> I, I checked the email. It's a full song. <laughs> oh, I go, goodness. hold on. I said, so I'm like, I said, am I singing? Like, am I singing my own song? Because this is an entire, like, oh. like everything. And they said, am I Sean Michaels? Now? Yeah. I said, <laughs> what is, I said, what is happening? And they said, they, they said, oh, yeah. Like, they said, yeah, you're, you're, you're singing it. And I said, I said, I can't sing at all. Like, I'm not a singer. So, like, what are we doing here? And the, the, <laughs> the initial list of lyrics was so bad. Like, it was so, like, 
I don't know. It wasn't like what you think at all. It was like everything was like touch my body and my body and my body. It was like I was like, what is happening? This is not like Eminem. I, let no, it go. It's very very <laughs> weird. We don't sound like consent yeah. is being made. So, <laughs> like, <laughs> so like meanwhile, I, I'm touch my body. That would be that would have been better. Right, yeah. Okay. So I'm, I'm reading this. It's only one of them '80s rave songs. Right. Horrible. Horrible. I'm telling you. I wish I, st- I I might still have it. I don't know. Oh, but so I need all of this to be released. It's ridiculous. Yes. Xavier. Yeah, yes. Get on your job. He has most of it. He has most of it. Um, So I end up like reading the email and I go, all right, I can't sing. You want me to sing and I have no voice. I'm sick. And they said, okay. So I'm like, I got to like maneuver this in a way where like, so I end up emailing back and I go, oh, this song sounds great. Uh, I said, would you guys mind if I like put some signature stuff in there? Like a couple things that are me and whatever. They said, yeah, it'd be awesome. So I basically rewrote almost the entire thing with like all the stuff you hear now. Mm. And I had to finesse it in a way where you can't tell people that like, hey, this sucks, uh, but like, hey, this might be better. So they're right. like, okay. Gotta so I, church it up. Yeah, so I go there the next day. Mm-hmm. Me and this guy, Brandon, we're in the, the booth, and we're just kind of like, I'm, <laughs> I'm singing this as like best I can, but it's horrible. And he plays it back, and I just went, oh my, like how mm-hmm. was... How am, how am I supposed to come to the ring to this? Like, oh, this is the worst thing that'll ever play, like, ever. And, and like, well, when you start getting into wrestling, it's really cringy and hard to watch yourself on tape back oh, again when yeah. you first start out. Oh. Now imagine, like, doing it with music and hearing yeah. yourself back. Oh, my God, it's the worst feeling in the, in the world. Well, and so, like, uh, like I'm saying, too, like, I'm, I'm listening to it back, and I, I was just starting to get in the good groove of, like, my stuff. The music at the time was like they've used it for all sorts of stuff. It's been on commercials and shows oh, and everything. Those songs. It's oh. one of those like generic ones, but it was I had this groove. It was like this like wicked song. I still wish I had it because it was so good. <laughs> but like I knew my entrance, I knew the spots, I knew the cues, I knew everything. And all of a sudden they like dropped this on me and I just went, uh, I have no clue how to do this. So I send it to them and I just went, well, it's gonna be whatever. It's gonna be whatever. And they end up sending me back this like super auto-tuned, like what it ended up being, and I went, I still hate it, but it's okay, and I guess I can make it work. And then it kind of like turned into whatever it was going to be, and we ended up doing the music video and like all this other stuff. And as we did it, somebody through somebody through somebody knew the Chainsmokers, and that song came out at the time, which was like a big deal. So they got in touch with them, and were like, "Hey, uh, you know, we got this guy," and they're like, "Oh yeah, we actually saw that and whatever." And they kind of wanted to like, they're like, "Hey, we can do like a collaboration on this thing." I said, "All right." And then I was like, I had no clue what it was going to be. Like I was like, "All right, am I do it? Like am I like flying somewhere to like meet you, or are we like mm-hmm. meeting or whatever?" We somehow started like a Twitter feud, kind of, where they said something about me and I said something about them and they said something about me and I said something about them. And then all of a sudden, they like put a picture or something in their video. And then I was like, oh, I guess that was, I guess I was in it. Like that was that was I found out when someone went, hey, I think he's in this. And I went, oh yeah, okay, that's it. And yeah. then that was it. Like we just kind of moved right along. It's so wow. weird how that like just drops in. Right. Like, Twitter tells you a lot of stuff. It tells you. Yeah. It tells you for the most part when your like new merch drops. Like yep. that's how I find out. Like oh, I got a new shirt. Like, yeah. someone went, he's got a new shirt. That's it. Like, oh, hey. Yeah. Cool, cool. Oh, it's out already? Yes. What? yes. I, that's how I found out about all different mm-hmm. things. Like, oh, okay, cool. I'm on that promo. That's awesome. it. What's yep. the most interesting cool. thing you found on Twitter, found out about on Twitter, about yourself? About myself? That you didn't know. That is you true. Had no idea. That, yeah, no idea. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. oh yeah. 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 Well, well, um... <laughs> Oh, no, pass. You first. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got nothing. <laughs> I, know I, don't, I, don't, I just rap. <laughs> ain't nothing about me. You got you got dropped from the label. Yes, I did. <laughs> I yeah. wasn't good enough. You already, well. you already knew. <laughs> yeah. uh, for me, mm, uh, found out like being on the indies. I found matches that I didn't know I was going to be in. Yeah, like, of course, like that. And but mm. outside of that, nothing major. I didn't have really bad like. Rapport and social media yeah, or anything nothing. like that. Now, thank God. Yeah, no, I, yeah, I don't think I had anything crazy like that yeah, too. Yeah, nothing, nothing crazy. Nothing that blew my mind anyway. Yeah. I was always pretty smart with social media. Where I was like, mm-hmm. eventually, I want to be like in WWE. So mm-hmm. I, I, I don't have like those like, oh, you know. See, I got on she social media this, pretty late. This, yeah, yeah, or like I'd get into arguments or like say controversial things or whatever. I was right. like, nah, I'm good. Mm-hmm. No, I don't care that much. Yeah, I, I don't <laughs> think I was even on. Like, I don't think I was. I, I don't think I got an Instagram and Twitter until I was in WWE. It just wasn't a thing, really. Yeah. Yeah. I had, like, MSN Messenger. Dang. Like, you had AIM? You had <laughs> AIM? Really I didn't even have AIM, man. Didn't even have it. Didn't even have it. I'll never forget. It was like, um, you remember, I don't know if you remember Latin Dragon? Like, old independent Indi- Indi- wrestler, up, uh, up north, east coast area. No, no. CZW guy. Um, shout out Latin Dragon, one of my buddies. Okay. 
Um, he's the one that actually we were on a car ride to New York to do a show, and he made my Twitter right there. Wow, he was like, he's wow. like, you're getting, you're, he's like, I'm tired of you not having Twitter. Yeah, you getting the Twitter. I'm like, Twitter. I, I was like, here, here. Man. He's like, just yeah, there's your Twitter. I'm like, all right, what do I do with it? Yeah, <laughs> like, that's what I had. That's it. And like now, seeing how it's evolved and stuff, I'm like, how do I get rid of it? Yeah, like, I'm like, please, yeah. somebody get this right. with me. You gotta oh, unplug every now and then. Yeah, it's a unplug. mess. The people are there to just, I'm like, just take the Even joke the news. and yeah. go. You could sit there, you, <laughs> could, you could sit there and argue all day if you oh, really right. wanted it's to. Really cool. But I even the news scares me though. Oh, don't mm. don't read news. Yeah, don't uh, read I'm news. like the news scares me. Like, yeah. Yeah. don't make you scared to leave and leave your room, man. Like, just stay in your house, never leave. Any interesting road stories in the past? Like, we're in 2020 now, so the last decade, I would say. Oof. Yeah, I got a bunch. Uh, like, so... PG! Yeah. No, I, yeah, I don't have anything crazy. Um, I guess, so when I was telling you about, like, my independent stuff, mm. it was a lot of, like, just random, like... So what we did was we, there were Indian Reserve tours. So, like, the Indian Reserves in Canada... Yeah, that's a big thing. Mm. Yeah, yeah, so, like, yeah. they basically, like, you can live there if you want or whatever, but, like, they, they get money, and I, I think they right. get paid, like, Fridays maybe or whatever it is. But basically what would happen was they would bring in a wrestling show. So they would pay X amount of dollars... This guy, uh, Ernie, who I was working for, he would get, like like I said, I think it was like six people, and we'd have like three matches and a six-man tag. And we would basically drive. We were in Calgary, which uh, Canada's gigantic, by the way. Yes. Yeah. So we would drive from Calgary to like Ontario, which would be like 20 hours. And then we'd, oh. and then we'd do the first show. One and, way? Yeah, oh, yeah. We'd go, we'd, well, so the way he booked it was crazy. It was horrible. So we would drive, and then we would just set up the ring, do the show, take the ring down, and go to the next town. And it would be like... Alberta to Ontario to Winnipeg back to Ontario over here over here so it was like four or five shows clearly we're, we're like dying as we're doing this like and it, it, they're not like your basic shows here like at one point we had to load the ring into a tiny little boat and like boat it across this thing to like this tiny little hall and then set it up and then boat it back in the dark and like all this stuff like Sheesh. not your average things so I'm doing these tours and like we're dying like we're going like you know here and here and here and here there was one time uh I was so tired. I was sitting in the passenger seat, and I keep looking over at my buddy Derek, and I go like, "You good, man?" <laughs> and, and he's like, "Sonka, you like, dead?" And he's like, "Yeah, I'm good." And I said, "I don't think so. Like, you're <laughs> you're 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 so tired. And I'm so tired, and like that's it." So I fall asleep, and I wake up, and we're like spinning off the road, and I'm like, <laughs> "I'm so tired that like all I did was just put my hands up in case we flipped over." Oh, and I was like, goodness. if it's happening, it's happening. Like, I can't do anything about it. <laughs> and, and, and all I see is, like, in the headlights, I just see dust. And, like, I have no clue what's happening. We're just spinning off the road. And finally we stop. And I just, like, look at him. And I go, what happened? And he goes, I don't know, man. We just, like, spun off the road. <laughs> yeah. like, all, all right. Like, continue on. So we just continued on. And, like, nobody even mentioned it. Like, we didn't even think anything about it. It was just, like, goodness. that happened a bunch of times. Uh, finally, the time that actually got me was, uh, I think I... It was my grandma. My grandma had just died, I think, on like the weekend or something. I had a show or during the week. I had a show on Saturday in Calgary. So maybe she died on like a Monday or something. I made the drive eight hours back to my hometown to like hang out with my family and like be there and whatever. Uh, I knew I had to make it back for the show on Saturday. So I was there and like I was going to leave Friday night and I was going to make it back Saturday morning and everything was going to be great and whatever. My mom's going like, do not drive at night. And I go, mom. I, I'm, uh, you know, at this point I'm like 20, 21. I drive no, all over the place. No I'm good. I can do this. Yeah, and she goes, "Do not drive. Like, just drive during the day. Like, why are you driving?" And I said, "No, I got to get there. I got to get there early. I got to set up the ring. I got to do this. Whatever, whatever." Mm. And she goes, "Don't drive. Don't drive. Don't drive. Don't drive." I said, "I'll be great." <laughs> so, it's it's winter. It's cold. I'm like in like shorts and a t-shirt in my truck, and I'm driving, and I, I get to Banff, and Banff is like 45 minutes from Calgary, and I go, "Oh, I'm making great time. It's like five in the morning." At this point, I'm already I'm getting really tired. So I keep pulling over and doing a lap around my truck. <laughs> so like every 20 minutes, and it's freezing cold. So I, I hop out and I, all right, I'm good. 20 minutes, and then I start fading, and I go, oh, pull over again. So I don't have a seatbelt on because I keep getting in and out of my truck to stay awake. I'm getting close, and I'm Which like, oh, I'm, so, I'm so close, I'm so close, I'm almost there. Man. And all of a sudden, I kind of like wake up, and I'm like speeding off the road on like slippery grass. And I go like, oh. Like this is it? Like I'm, I, I, I brakes nothing. Like it's, it's, it's just ice. I'm just skid skidding on ice, and I tap the brakes, and my truck just turns sideways, and I have no seatbelt on, and I'm looking, and there's a billboard, like a gigantic like uh, post mm -hmm. that's holding this billboard up, 
And I just look at it and I go like, I'm going to fly out the passenger window when I hit this. Like, this is what's going to happen. And all this is like, it, it could have been like, I don't know, two, three seconds. But in my head, it was like the slowest thing. And I'm yeah. just so rationally thinking like, I have no seatbelt on. I better hold on to the steering wheel really tight because I'm going to go flying through that window if I if I don't hang on. That's a pleasant way of thinking. Crazy. Right? Mm-hmm. Crazy. Like, I would have been like... Bah, 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 bah. I thought... So, like, this is the closest at this point I've been to, like, you know, a death or an accident or whatever. So I'm thinking, like, I might have a scream in me or something. Not a peep. Nothing. Just rational thinking, holding a steering wheel mm. so tight. And as I'm sliding towards this thing, I remember hitting the pole, and as I hit it, I went, well, that wasn't so bad. <laughs> <laughs> and I start spinning, and I spin back up on the road, and I go, oh, I might be okay. And then I spin back off the road, and I go down this gigantic, like, bank into these trees and stuff. And I just go, like, whoa. And I hit these trees, and I just, and my truck kind of stalls out, and I go, all right. Start my truck back up, put it in reverse, and just try to, like, back up. Clearly, I can't go anywhere. Yeah, no. and, and I go, <laughs> like, uh, my phone's dead. I've got no charger. And I go, my mom is going to kill me. She's going to kill me. So it's like six, I think it's like five or six a.m. I'm supposed to be home by, by already. I climb back up this bank and I kind of hail down like a, uh, a trucker and I go, hey man, like that's me down there. And, 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 and he, <laughs> yeah, goes, he goes, all right, like let's call like a, you know, a tow truck, whatever. Tow truck's like 45 minutes out. So I'm sitting there. I think at this point, like I'm freezing. Um, by the time he shows up, it's like nine or 10. And I'm like, oh my God, nobody's heard from me. Like they're thinking I'm dead. Like I should have been home by six o'clock. And so finally, like, I look at my truck, and my truck is destroyed. Like, the whole side of it is caved in. The box is off. Like, everything's messed up on it. Mm. And so they they end up pulling it out of there. They put it up on a truck, and I'm going, like, oh, man. Damn. Like, I I, I knew it. I knew it. I end up going, and, like, I get to the dealership, and I call my dad. And I go, hey. And he goes, what happened? And I, I, I said, I said, yeah, I crashed. And he goes, he goes, yeah, I figured. And he goes, how bad? I said, yeah, it's pretty bad. I said, like, truck's destroyed. And he goes, but you're okay? I said, yeah. He goes, okay. So I call my mom. Immediately, she's like, what happened? And I go, eh. And she goes, she goes, you did, didn't you? And you crashed. And I said, yeah. She goes, you okay? I said, yeah. And she's like, uh, truck? I said, no, not good. <laughs> she goes, okay. So I call my girlfriend, same thing. She's like, what are you doing? Like, why are the trucks destroyed? All this other stuff. So I end up going to the show that night, of course. And still I'm like, yeah. You got to go. Uh, you got to still go. Didn't even think about it. Yeah, I, just, I, I took the truck to the dealership. They were going to fix it. And I just went to the show. I was like, yeah, I just got we're a car accident. Mental. Oh, my. We're all so Lunacy. We we're are programmed. Lunacy. We're not we're programmed s- correctly. We're yeah. not. Ridiculous. I was like, well, I made it to the show. Because we're all in agreement. It's like, yeah, yeah, you yeah, go. Yeah, I would have done the same thing. I would have done the same thing. Yeah, I went to the same exact thing. I didn't even think about it. I was like, yeah, I'm okay. Like, everything's cool. I'll wrestle. Still got my gear back. Yes. I'm out. Yes. My legs, yep. Uh-huh. Can't, can't, do a mean lockup. <laughs> <laughs> Even Crazy. if I couldn't work, I right. but work my leg. I'm still gonna find a way around it. You. Hip toss, one, two, three. That's it. That's Ridiculous. what. That's what happens. We we're bred into. Right. This, uh, just we're weird. Take, we're weird people, we're very, man. We're not. We're, we're weird not people. Right. Yeah. Mm-mm. Like I. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. And, it's, and you can't explain that kind of mentality to an average person. You no, you no. They just go, what? Like, what are you talking about? No. Why? Why would you do that? Why, why, like, why I don't would you do this? Because, <laughs> because I'm trying to live the dream. Mountain, yeah. 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 I have a dream for the pop, to man. For the, for, the, for the pop. For the pop. Yeah. I love the pop. I'm going to get paid $25 tonight. Yeah. Duh. That's why. Oh, um, so. This is we kept you for a while now, man. We're all good. We, we're all heard good. some great stories from you. We'd love to have for you to come back because you got a lot to talk about. I got right. dude. We yeah. didn't even we didn't even talk about That's, like we didn't touch the my surface NXT like, stuff. Yeah. My, dude, oh. I'm telling no, you, NXT stuff. Your I'm first not, time you're in a video game. We didn't talk about your wife, who was also a former she FSCW was. champion. Oh yes, I mean, this is true. so much stuff. So much we stuff. So but much that's why there's a part two. That's why there's another season. That's, well, that's right. Nice. That's going to be dropping Ooh. after this, but not. Well, we're still fresh in season three. Mm. I'm talking later on. I'm, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm really am. Excited. But, Speaking into uh, existence, my brother. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. We ain't getting canceled yet. Also, but anyway, Happy um, Black History Month. Yeah. I just want to say that one time. I hit the table. <laughs> my bad. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> they're sick of me they hate me yeah. they hate working for me you said just don't touch the table yeah, I, I, I can't do simple tasks but anyway um, you got some stuff to plug man you've been doing some stuff on up up down down with Xavier and so, oh my God. so much up up down down stuff so oh. up up down down which then has transferred on the up up down up up down down champion by the way yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. But that is that has also allowed me to open up left, right, left, right. I've been which, on that recently. Yeah, yeah. Which is it's the the NXT version, um, and oh. you know, uh, kind of invading. We're taking over. Uh, but yeah, so I got up, up, down, on stuff on the go. 
like I said, I got the NXT stuff on the go. I got 205 on the go. Um, I got the wrestling school, flatbackswrestlingschool.com, uh, with myself and Sean Spears as the, the head coaches. You actually learn from us. There's nobody else there. That's We're the ones who teach you. you the first time you try anything is with us. So, And I um, appreciate that. Instead of having like the title of the person that trains it. You never like, see me Who's again? this guy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, why is yeah. this guy training me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, and that's... Oh, uh, oh brother. Yeah. Oh, man. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. But that's... I mean, that, that was... With all this shade. That was... <laughs> <laughs> but that was kind of I mean, that was our thinking going into it too you know what I mean of like you need to like you need to learn properly like this has to be safe like a lot of people just go wrestling's fun and then they do whatever and it's like you don't realize you got someone's life in your hands yeah, yeah whole like other thing driving off a road um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah so we got the wrestling school on the, on the go we got uh, the sweets which is uh, the streaming the streaming channel on twitch um, so the sweets live uh, what www.twitch.com slash the sweets live yep. something like that and uh, what else? I want to say that's it, but it's probably not. So a much. busy man, man. He has so it's much. Too much, on. man. I just finished renovating my bathroom and stuff. Like just, Ooh. just random stuff. You know what I mean? Like, hey, let's try this. I taught myself how to do plumbing and electric. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. You didn't work need a degree crazy. for it. No. It's crazy. No, you just turn some power off and <laughs> do some stuff. It's crazy. That's my favorite part about being a mechanic is doing yeah. electric work. Yeah. yeah. I figured out plumbing stuff wipes. today. That part of my brain don't work very well. It does. They were you, like, you, you could do it. See, okay. mm, see I, I like, I, I'm no, I did some research and they're like, there's some parts of the brain that don't activate ah. properly. You got to kind of shift it. The, yeah. the, the, the limits, like, limits, yeah. uh, the only limits you got are the ones like, you put. You know, it's like Michael Jordan's brain of <laughs> being competitive was shifted the other way. Sure, he'd be, sure, like, sure. He'd be like, uh, you know, like Charles Manson. You know, he'd wow, be insane. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. So mine is shifted the other way. So if that's what you want. Yeah, I don't want to be Charles Manson. No. A funny little road story before we close the episode. Something happened um, over this uh, weekend of the Royal Rumble weekend. So I was on the NXT Live tour uh, coming from Louisiana. We had to do Memphis, and then we went to Louisiana. So we had to go drive from Memphis to Arkansas, stop oh, yeah. in Arkansas, sleep there, drive it next morning to Louisiana. Did Louisiana, came all the way back to Houston. Houston had the Worlds Collide, yep. and then we had Royal Rumble. So we get into Houston hotels. I'm rooming with Matt Riddle. It's three <laughs> thirty in the morning, four in the morning. Everybody's like, literally, the line is this long of yeah. all everybody getting on the bus. Of course, all the talent, the whole roster getting in line to get their rooms and stuff. It's going to take like an hour. So me and Riddle, thank God, we're like first. So we get our rooms. We go up to the room. Boom! It's like floor sixteen. Mm-hmm. So it's super high up there. I'm like, okay, all right, we made it finally. Nothing Scan. Starts. No. We did not. But still, this is an exhausting <laughs> elevator. Very exhausting. Yeah. Um, yeah, get there, yeah, scan. Yes. Doesn't work. Scan. Doesn't work. And I'm like, but it also has the um, do not disturb sign on the front. I'm like, Ooh. man, I think this is somebody's Somebody's room, there, man. yeah. And he's like, he's like, bro, they wouldn't do that to us, man. Come <laughs> yes, on. They, would. they wouldn't do that. This is our room. <laughs> they totally wouldn't do that. I'm like, Matt, I'm pretty sure this is somebody else's room. He's like, dude, I'm telling you, it's nobody's room. <laughs> All right, I'm going downstairs to get another key. 16 floors back down. 16 floors back up. Scan. Nothing. Scan. Nothing. Man, I'm really sure this is somebody else's room. This, bro, I'm telling you, man. It's not anybody's <laughs> room. I'm saying. I'm like, all right, let's call maintenance. Maintenance guy comes in, wheels the little cart thing, scans the thing. Oh, it works. Opens. Oh, yeah. Bolted. Someone's in. I'm like, Matt, I told you somebody's in this room, man. He's like, bro, why would they do that? They would not put somebody else in our room. I'm telling you, bro. I'm like, <sighs> so the, apparently the desk is calling in the room. Uh, the guy's knocking in. Uh, uh, engineer, engineer, engineer. This goes on for like maybe five minutes. Sure. Engineer, dork, bolts up, flies open. It's Cesaro. <laughs> I'm like, I bet he was so mad. By oh, the way. He, but he came in. He opened up like he was ready to throw your oh, yeah. hands. Yes. He was like, <laughs> he's, he's intense, man. I yeah. Love it. And then like, uh, man, I'm like, Matt, I told you this was somebody's <laughs> room, man. He's like, wow, it's somebody's room. <laughs> what the heck? Wow. It's so, so but he was such a good sport about it. He's like, you guys just get off the bus or something? I was yeah. like, yeah, we just came through. He's like, oh man, that's rough, man. Oh, that's funny. They were calling like, who's the Strickland guy? I don't know a Strickland. <laughs> this is Claudio. Yeah. This is a, and they were on the phone. So he's like, so now he's a Strickland. Now, so now I walk in the back and and Royal Rumble. He's like Strickland. <laughs> <laughs> it's Strickland. Yeah. And then I saw him in the PC today. 
Strictly. <laughs> so, that's that's how it happens. That's how so it happens. that was my weekend story. Funny little story right there. Hey man, at least you wasn't holding the back of your head bleeding, brother. Yeah, that's that's right. Right. No blood required. No blood required, bro. But I'm that's like, this could have been any, uh, this could have been a very mean person that could open oh, the yeah. door as well. This could have been, True. yeah. Yes. I'm like, thank God I got good sports to sorrow. Yeah. In this, so. But um, yeah, let's close this episode out, man. We had a good time with uh, Tyler Breeze over here, man. Big Swole, where they can find you at? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Swole World, or you find me on Instagram at The Big Swole. The Big Swole with the new shirt right there, the new with merch. The new, oh, yes. Nice. Say it, show it one more again. One more again for the people at the house. And, and one more again for the for the for the house. Sit you up on your feet. Funk is on a roll. Funk is on a roll. Funk is on a roll. Okay. Alright, yeah. Right. And T Scott Nail this black girl Yo. magic. Yeah. T Scott, Twitter, Instagram. Make sure you cop our album, which is coming out in April. April fourth from Humble Beginnings. Wow. We have um, been in the studio working on this classic album. We just dropped a. We just did a song with Leo Rush featured on it. Yeah, nice. yeah. got a song with Leo on there. Uh, make sure you guys check that out. We Them have hot a, crisp vocals. Um, a joint called Body Art coming out soon, featuring mm-hmm. Juice from the Flatbush Zombies. Make sure you guys check that out. We have uh, we have a lot of stuff in the works, so make sure you yeah. guys stay tuned. In got the meantime, stream mm-hmm. Broke Boys. Yeah, stream uh, that too. Miss Wall offered the crisp vocals on that. Song. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And not to mention, we just dropped Chit Trap today. So get that on the youtube.com backslash Swerve City Podcast. That's on the channel now, Chit Trap. And we're going to drop another one tonight. So, um, yeah, as always, be confident in everything you do. Wash your ass. Oh, you'll get a pop pop. Pow. Mm. Oh, no. That's great. Yeah. And close. Yeah, that's a, that's a real. <laughs>